and welcome to my channel. My name is Jara and I teach people how to garden and grow food. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to grow tons of muscadine grapes from transplanting vines into your garden all the way to harvest. I will discuss cultivar selection, ideal growing conditions, and show you how I harvest my grapes because right now they are ready. Muscadine grapes are one of the easiest fruiting plant options for the backyard home gardener. They are native to the southern parts of the United States, which means they grow very easily and produce a lot without much care. Not to mention they also don't have many diseases or pest issues. That is why I recommend this as a fruit crop option for beginner gardeners. And there are so many uses for them. They can be used to make juice, jellies, eaten fresh, or used to make wine. Muscadine grapes work very well in permaculture and food forest type settings as they are perennial plants that will produce for 20 years or more. If you're looking for edible plants that produce a high volume of food to help you be more self-sustainable, I can't recommend muscadine grapes enough. Depending on the cultivar, you can expect a mature muscadine grapevine to produce on average 35 pounds of grapes per year. To give you an idea, last year I harvested 20 pounds of these grapes right here and made jelly with it. It was enough to make 12 8 ounce jars of jelly, which is way more than enough to provide a year's worth of my household need of jelly. Let's start this grow guide by first talking about cultivar selection and how muscadine grapes compare to table grapes, which are bunching grapes best for fresh eating because they have thin, crisp, edible skins, or how they compare with grapes used to make wine. There are two types of categories within the grape or vitis family. Vitis vinifera refers to European wine grapes, while vitis labrusca refers to native North American grapes like the muscadine grape table bunching grapes, and juice grapes like the Concord grape. Muscadine grapes are usually used to make jellies, juice, and wines. They have thicker skins, which are not usually the best for fresh eating. Usually the skins have tannins, which can give a bitter flavor. However, in recent years, a lot of universities have bred new cultivars of muscadine grapes that have thinner skins with less tannins so you can eat the whole thing. They all have a few large seeds in the middle, but no big deal, just spit them out. Table or bunching grapes are usually the kind you see at the grocery store. They are best for fresh eating. They are sweet, have minimal seeds, if any, and the skins are thin and crisp so you can eat the whole thing. They are also bred to have more pulp versus juice. Table grapes have less acidity and also less sugar than a wine grape. Yes, believe it or not, less sugar. It is also said that seedless grapes are less sweet than the seeded grapes. Comment below if you agree or disagree. Wine grapes are specifically bred to make sweet and strong flavored wines. These grapes are smaller, have lots of seeds, thicker skins, and more juice compared to the table grapes. They are not that great for fresh eating though. Another difference between the grapes is disease resistance. In the southern parts of the United States, we have a bacteria that causes Pierce's disease. This disease clogs the water conducting vessels of table and wine grapes, and there is no cure. But guess what? Muscadine grapes are not affected. This is why you see muscadine grapes being grown all over the southern parts of the United States versus table or European wine grapes, which grow better up north. There are big differences in production. A mature muscadine grape vine, which means a vine that is at minimum about four years old, can produce on average 35 pounds of grapes per year compared to just eight pounds of table grapes. Now let's talk about differences between the muscadine grape cultivars so you choose the best one for your garden. There are some important differences between fertility among the muscadine grapes. Wild muscadine grapes and many of the common cultivars grown today require other plants to cross pollinate. Individual plants are either completely female or completely male. So a female plant requires a male plant to be nearby in order to cross pollinate. Only the female vines produce fruit while the male plants are just there to provide pollen. However, a lot of the newer cultivars have been bred to be self fertile. This is an important feature to check for when deciding what plant you should buy. The home backyard gardener or a gardener with limited space like me should focus on self-fertile varieties to maximize production with fewer plants. These self-fertile cultivars have an increased production of about 40 to 50 percent compared to the non-self-fertile varieties. An example of a self-fertile variety is Alachua. Grapes are medium size, they're very dark purple. It makes great juice and can be eaten fresh and makes for good wine. Next, there are a lot of different colors of muscadines, just like with table grapes. The most common muscadine grape is dark purple in color, but it also comes in bronze, pink, and black. The bronze colored muscadine grapes are sometimes referred to as scuppernogs. A unique colored muscadine grape is called Triumph. It has a pinkish bronze color. 
it is good for fresh eating primarily. There are huge differences between grape size. Muscadine grapes can range from a quarter inch to one and a half inch in diameter depending on the cultivar. One of the largest muscadine grape cultivars is called Supreme. These grapes can be as big as one and a half inches. Supreme grapes have crisp skins and are very sweet at 22% sugar content, making them a favorite for fresh eating. However, a downside is that it is a female male plant, which means they need additional plants to be able to cross pollinate. Usually Supreme is ready for harvest between August and September. The sugar content of grapes is measured by percent or using a Brix refractor meter, which is a small tool that uses a prism to measure the amount of sugar in various fruits. In this guide, I will be referencing sweetness by the percentage of sugar content. Two of the sweetest muscadine grapes include Fry, which is good for fresh market and produces very large bronze grapes. It has a 21% sugar content. And Supreme, like I mentioned before, which has a 22% sugar content. Thickness of the skin varies across the cultivars, with some being more thick than others. A great variety that has thinner skins, making it favorable for fresh eating, is Southern Home. This one is a very unique muscadine grape variety because it is a hybrid between the European wine grapes and a muscadine grape. So it produces grapes in bunches like table grapes. Like I just said, a lot of muscadine grapes have thick skins, which is why a lot of people don't like to eat them fresh. Blanc du Bois was developed by the University of Florida to be consumed as a table grape or it can be used to make wine. It produces light green colored grapes. It is also a very early ripening muscadine grape. It ripens in July compared to like August and September for the other varieties. Delicious is another muscadine bred to be eaten fresh, but it is very dark purple, almost black in color, and it's famous for being a really heavy producer. If you wanna make wine, which is what I think I'm gonna be doing with all of this harvest, some cultivars are known to be better than others. A really great wine option is called Noble, which is a dark purple muscadine. Many agree that it is the best muscadine to make red wine. Its color holds up long as it ages and the flavor is not as musky like most muscadine grapes. I just mentioned Blanc du Bois. This one is very popular when making white wines. Lastly, there are differences in the time of year when the grapes are ready for harvest. It is a good idea to have a mix of muscadine cultivars that produce at different times of the year to extend your season. For example, you could plant Blanc du Bois, which is usually ready for harvest in July, and then plant Delicious, which is ready in August, and then choose one of the late season maturing varieties like Southern Home, which produces from around September to October. So you can harvest muscadine grapes over a four month period. I know I just dumped a huge amount of information about muscadine grapes, but I hope this helps you choose the best cultivar for your garden. Well, if you learned something and you're ready to take your gardening skills to a new level, make sure to subscribe to my channel. I post daily videos packed with gardening tips and inspiration to cultivate your green thumb. By the way, if you're looking for muscadine grape plants, depending on the time of year, I usually have a few different varieties available on my website, along with other really cool edible plants and seeds. All right, so let's move on to how to grow and plant muscadine grapes in your garden. First, I'm gonna discuss choosing the right spot to grow muscadine grapes and build a trellis for vertical support. Muscadine grapes need full sun. If you're in Florida, don't fear. <laughs> These plants can handle the heat and full sun like a champ. The ideal soil is loamy, but on the sandy side, so higher amounts of sand than the other components. I planted my muscadine grapes in a mound of pure compost. More about that in a bit once I get to the part where I show you how to plant them. <laughs> As they develop larger root systems, it definitely grew down past the mound and into my native Florida sandy soil that is beneath it. And it's doing just fine. It is important to select a spot that doesn't flood and has good drainage. If the root system sits in water for a long period of time, it will cause root rot and kill the entire plant. Once established, muscadine grapevines are tough and very drought tolerant. Make sure you mulch heavily to keep the root system cooler and maintain more consistent water levels. Allow the soil to dry a little bit in between watering. If your soil is sandy, then pay extra attention because it dries out faster. It is very important that the vines get adequate water while the grapes are forming, which is like May through June. And that time of the year for Florida is pretty dry, so make sure you check up on your plants. Then we start getting consistent rain all the way through September, which is enough to water my mature vines. When grapes are near to being ripe, it's important to back 
back off a little bit on watering starting around in August so they can develop more sugar content. Try to use drip irrigation to water your plants because overhead watering causes wet leaves and increases the incidence of diseases. An established muscadine grapevine can tolerate down to 10 degrees Fahrenheit, but they really thrive in the heat and are recommended for growing in the south zones seven and up. If you're growing more than one muscadine grape plant, space them at least 10 feet apart. They get really big. Depending on the cultivar, they can grow 25 feet in just one season. There are so many options when it comes to building a vertical structure for muscadine grapes to grow on. Mine are growing over an eight foot by eight foot gazebo. I have two plants, one on each side, one right there, another one right here. They also look gorgeous as a focal point on like a pergola or arch. They can be used to cover fences, but just keep in mind they go dormant during the winter and they will lose all their leaves. So it might not be the best option for like a privacy hedge. In commercial settings and you pick farms, grapes are grown in very long rows along wires that are strung between posts. They are shorter trellis systems, about five to six feet tall to make it easier to reach and harvest all of the grapes. That might be something to consider because I do hate reaching up and trying to grab some of the grapes that are growing at the very top of my gazebo. So the majority of you home backyard gardeners are probably gonna grow it up something similar to this. In this video, I am demonstrating and providing information on how to grow them up a structure like a gazebo or arch, not in rows. If you have the space and wanna grow them in rows, I will link in the description below to a few YouTube videos that I thought were great guides on building these shorter, longer trellis systems. I have seen some people plant muscadine grapes and blackberries even in some really big, heavy, thick duty plastic pots that are growing up against a wire trellis system. The pots were placed above weed blocking material, so it kept the weeds out pretty well. All right, so let me show you how to plant a muscadine grapevine. If you purchased a plant that is smaller than a one gallon size, then I recommend that you plant it in a one gallon size pot and grow it out for a little bit. I have a tendency to forget about newly planted small plants. I'll mow right over them sometimes. So I like to grow them to a bigger size before I plant them outdoors. Just fill a pot with some potty mix and plant it right in the middle. When you start to notice roots coming out of the drainage holes at the bottom, gently lift the plant up to check how developed the root system is. If the roots wrap around the whole container, then it's pretty much ready to be transplanted outdoors. All right, so let me show you how to transplant it in the ground. You most definitely could transplant something this size if you're careful and you watch out for it. But for demonstration purposes, we're gonna pretend that this is a one gallon size plant. So like I had mentioned earlier in this video, I make a huge mound out of compost, topsoil, whatever. The cheapest one I could find at the nearest store because I'm in Florida and everything floods heavily during the summer and that causes a lot of root rot. I can't tell you how many fruit trees I have lost from root rot. Planting them up in a mound helps with better drainage and just keeps those roots a little bit more drier. So you're gonna pile up a couple bags of compost, topsoil, whatever. This took about three of the 40 pound size bags. Make a big mound. This is approximately like three foot wide by two feet tall. This is also how I plant all my fruit trees, by the way. Dig a hole right in the middle. I always recommend that you put some fertilizer in the planting hole. I recommend a Spoma brand. It's an organic fertilizer. In particular, their citrus tone. Organic fertilizers won't burn your plants like the synthetic stuff will. So put some fertilizer in there, mix it in with the soil a little bit, and then you're gonna plant your plants at equal height at whatever that soil level is. The last thing to do is to heavily mulch this. If you can get free wood chips from like Chip Drop or something like that, even better. Or go to your nearest big box store and get some mulch, but please don't use dyed mulch. Those colors are extra chemicals that you would be putting into your garden. So just choose a mulch that is dye free, okay? Not dyed, it's just natural. Cover this mound with like a two inch thick layer of mulch and I reapply about once a year. Did you know that you could grow muscadine grapes in containers? This one right here, I planted in a 25 inch diameter wooden whiskey barrel because it was kind of out here in the corner and I didn't want to like run over it with my lawnmower. So I planted it in this whiskey barrel and it is growing great. If you wanna do this, I recommend you don't get anything smaller than a 25 inch diameter or 16 inch height or depth for this. I just filled up this barrel with the cheapest compost I can find, but you could also use garden soil or just potting mix. All right, so you planted the muscadine grapes in your garden. Here's a few tips on how to take care of them. When it comes to fertilizing muscadine grapes, there's some pretty specific requirements. So I will list them right here. And I also have a blog post on my website, kind of a summary of how to grow muscadine grapes where I will put this information there too. So that way you could copy and save it if you have to. But I recommend that you use 10-10-10 fertilizer or a Spoma brand citrus tone if you want something organic. 
when you fertilize, you're just going to make like a circular band all the way around the base of your muscadine grape, about one foot away from the trunk. Pruning is super important to get the most production out of your muscadine grapes. Pruning techniques for muscadine grapes are also very, very specific. If you're growing them in rows, there's a specific way that it has to be done. So I will link in the description below to a couple videos that I thought explained the pruning process for long rows very well. But as a home backyard gardener, I'm growing this thing up a huge post. So I have to kind of alter the pruning technique a little bit to fit my situation. No matter your setup during the first year, it's really important that you select the strongest vine to become your main cordon. So when I first planted this, this was my main vine. I mean, another one grew off here and is going the other way, but you want one main vine. You're gonna usually keep this all nice and clean. So I'm gonna be pruning off all of these additional like branches here, but keep this nice and cleared until it gets to the height that you want. At that point, you're gonna snip the very tip of that vine to cause it to branch out in two ways, one way to the right and another way to the left. Ideally, you would want these two branches here to grow horizontal. So exactly horizontal to the right and another one to the left. But I'm growing this up a post to get to the top of a gazebo. So I have to alter this a little bit. This main stem right here or trunk is kind of wrapping around. I tied it to this post as it grew until it eventually got all the way to the top here. And then it's just sprawling out, growing all over the top. You need to know one very important fact about how muscadine grapes produce year after year. And this applies no matter what your setup is. Muscadine grapes produce flowers and therefore fruit on new growth, the new growth for that year or that season. So in the winter time, this will lose all of its leaves. It kind of goes dormant. That is the best time to prune the heck out of these plants. So in January, I will be pruning all of this stuff back, all of this stuff up here, all, everything, just kind of back to the main post here. Then when you start seeing leaf emergence, which happens around March or April of the following spring, you're going to fertilize very well to promote lots of new lush leafy green growth. And it's from that new growth that the plants will flower and then produce fruit. Do not worry, prune the heck out of these plants. You wanna force it to put on lots of new growth out of all the buds and points along you know, the vines or your trunks. You're not hurting the plant, you're reinvigorating it. The older that a vine gets, the less it will produce. Also, the longer that a vine gets, the further away the fruit that is being produced here on its tips is from the main stem or trunk where most of the energy is coming from to produce nice big fruit. Therefore, it is recommended that you keep your vines shorter than around 10 feet so they're closer to that main trunk down there and that will help produce better quality and bigger fruit. I know this looks like a huge mess, but come January, this won't have any leaves whatsoever. It's pretty easy to identify the vines. If you're like me, a home backyard gardener, you're probably growing this up like a trellis, arbor, something like that. Do the best that you can. Prune and make this fit to your vine and keep things short and healthy as much as you can. Luckily, muscadine grapes don't have many pest issues. Just monitor for any aphids, which like to suck the juices out of the tender new green growth. I usually get a few clusters of black aphids, but to be honest, I leave them alone. I usually go away after a hard spray of water from my water hose. If the situation was really bad, then I would spray with some organic insecticidal soap. Animals and other critters might be the biggest threat to your muscadine grapes because they love to eat them. This can be challenging to control sometimes, but try to plant your grapevines as far away from wooded areas as possible. There really are no muscadine grape diseases. They are native to the southern parts of the United States and are immune to a lot of them. Plus, they are grown vertically, which picks plants up off the ground away from the soil-borne diseases. If you get some powdery mildew or a leaf spot, spray with one cup of hydrogen peroxide per gallon of water. In some instances, although not very common, muscadine grapevines can get one of several types of rots which affect the grapes. It causes them to drop off the vine and dry out among other things. It's caused by various different pathogens and can be difficult to control. I recommend spraying the vines with horticultural oil over the winter to suppress these types of pathogens. Time of year when muscadine grapes are ready to harvest is going to vary greatly depending on the cultivar. It's important you do your research. Grapes are ready to harvest when they start to give a little bit when you squish on them. And just so you're aware, most of the time with the majority of all the different muscadine grape cultivars, you're gonna harvest two times. There's the initial harvest, which tends to be the best, the most quantity and the bigger grapes. But most of the time, not all of the grapes are ready yet. There's still some ripening up. So that's why I say most likely you'll have a second harvest. 
when you harvest the grapes, there's lots of different options. Some people like to just put a tarp on the ground and then shake their arbor, trellis, whatever, your vines, if you can do that. And then all the ripened grapes will fall down and collect on top of the tarp. Other people like to just cut the whole bunch of grapes off. Or you can pick them one by one individually. There's one thing to keep in mind though, and this does vary across the different cultivars. When you pluck these grapes off from the woody part of the stem that connects it to the vine, it will leave what is called a wet scar. To be honest, the grapes that I have barely have a wet scar. It still looks like completely sealed, but other varieties might open up a little bit more and release some juice, it just depends. So those will go bad more quickly than these ones that have a more dry scar. If you're gonna harvest them one by one, it is suggested that you immediately refrigerate them so they last longer. If you want them to last longer, like at market or on your kitchen counter, then it's best to pick like the whole bunch. That way you don't have the whole wet scar thing being exposed. So anyways, I'm gonna get to it and harvest up all of the grapes that I possibly can. I'm just gonna take a big bowl and start filling it up. I am going to harvest mine one by one so that they are ready for processing. There's so many grapes clustered up in this area. Yeah, if I knew what I know now, I would not have planted my muscadine grapes in this way because it can get a little difficult to get in there and harvest any of the grapes up top. Look at how big these grapes are. Look at this harvest. And there's probably still enough left there to fill up a whole nother bowl. If you have any cool and unique ideas on how to preserve or use up all of these muscadine grapes, please comment below because I'm still considering if I should either make wine with it or something else. Well, any ideas would be greatly appreciated. Well, let me try one of these. So sweet. Yeah, that skin is not bitter at all. And here's what the inside looks like. Yes, it has some pretty big seeds. There's three of them there in the middle, but they're very easy to just spit out. All right, so I harvested all of the grapes that I could, and I have three big bowls fulls. Let's weigh this to see if I beat my record last year. I'm going to pour them all into this bucket, and then we're going to subtract the weight of the bucket from the total. Filled up this bucket, and I already hit 22 pounds or 21 pounds minus the weight of the bucket. So I definitely beat last year's totals. All right, so I added the weights of everything and I have 27 pounds and 11 ounces of muscadine grapes. So I beat last year's 20 pounds by seven pounds and then some. If you enjoyed this guide and learned something new, make sure you give me a big thumbs up. You have no idea how much that helps my channel. If you have a favorite cultivar of muscadine grape or any tips and tricks for me, make sure to comment below because I learn just as much from you guys as you do from me. Thank you for watching and happy gardening.